I got a call from now those ITA guys from now the testing cause I told them I need to appeal this thing cause they gave me a hearing and they gave me a hearing two hours before the rest. 20 minutes later they responded in an email they were like we can't let you compete. I dropped everything and I was like I'm done. Are the emails saying it's contamination? To clarify certain issues, I sat down with Sarah Ochwada. Sarah has been handling several anti-doping cases for Kenyan athletes and has been assisting Mark in his case. Sarah, you've been handling this um, case for Marco Tieno. Um, what can you tell us about the case that will get us into trouble, basically? And uh, also tell us how you got to handle the case. Okay. Well, uh, Mark's case is an anti-doping rule violation case, which is typical for those who have their samples collected and which test positive. The only difference is with the information that we now have and the investigations we've done, we've discovered that his sample tested positive due to contamination of a supplement. Now what we're doing is trying to prove that he bore no fault or he wasn't negligent in the taking of that supplement. And based on that, we'll provide evidence to AIU and the other bodies um, so that we can help him to mitigate any sanctions which might be coming his way. What is the difference between doping and contamination? Explain it to the layman. Well, there's no difference in the doping world. Whether it was your positive case came out due to you actually taking an intentional substance which is prohibited or you taking a substance by accident, for example, through contamination, both are considered to be anti-doping rule violations. The distinction you have to make is who is an intentional doper or doping cheat and who is unintentional. So in cases of contamination, it's unintentional anti-doping rule violations. And that's what I would like a lot of the public to understand is you don't just go out there and call everyone a doping cheat even though their samples have come out positive, you need to understand the circumstances which led to that anti-doping rule violation. What are the possible outcomes of this case, of a case like of this? Of a case like this. Well, the standard sanction for any anti-doping rule violation is a four-year suspension from sport. But Mark's case is different because he had a sample which tested positive during the Tokyo Olympics, which means he had to face one case to deal with whether or not he should participate at the Olympics, which is separate from the case he would have to face concerning whether or not he should be suspended from, from sport and athletics in particular for the four-year term. So what we would be looking at ideally is a four-year suspension based on um, just a first, first violation within the anti-doping code. And what we would like to do is ensure that whatever sanctions are there, we mitigate them so that he doesn't have to face um, the four-year suspension, which is uh, standard under the anti-doping code. What does it mean? Because in Mark's case, we have found that it was a supplement that did not have a certain substance, later had a certain substance. What does this mean for how athletes have to handle what they consume, be it in terms of supplements or food? Um, it's so sad because athletes need to be almost, uh, well, they need to be highly vigilant to the point of almost being paranoid, right? So everything you take, you must take utmost care. Where does it come from? Is it safe? Do some research on the internet, check sources, check even as far as you can go. Look at the cases which are involved. Has any athlete been caught with this particular um, supplement before? Are there, is there a history of this supplements having positive, um, uh, positive uh, doping issues? So they really need to be very careful about their, what they take from a manufacturing perspective. But also day to day, um, your food can be contaminated with something. Um, I'll give you an example. Beef and pork, particularly from certain areas of the world, are fed certain fertilizers or, or foods which have been grown with certain fertilizers which have chemicals that are 
containing prohibited substances. So in case you take food from one of these regions, you are likely to face some sort of um, positive test from doping based on that region. But the good thing is the anti-doping world has been moving forward and usually if you get a contamination of a particular substance from a certain region uh, based on the food you've eaten, they will look at where you are, what you've taken and see whether or not you, you can mitigate the suspension. In Mark's case, which I'm not sure if you can talk about this or not, but in Mark's case, here is a supplement you've taken, mm -hmm. you've been tested while taking, and you've, been, you've come out negative. You take the same supplement, but a different batch, and this time it's positive. And none of it is in the labeling. Yeah, that, that is quite unfortunate. And I will say it's one of the issues we have raised, but we have to be careful about um, what we can say now, because it's part of the evidence we've, pre we've presented to the AIU. And beyond Mark, it's also a consumer protection issue. Because if you mislabel or you avoid to put certain ingredients on your label, then that would be part of manufacturer's liability. Meaning anyone who gets in trouble for consuming that product, outside of sports even, just any consumer of that product should know what's in the product before they consume it. So that would be an issue for the manufacturers to um, tell us what's going on with, with them. Why are you mislabeling and deceiving consumers about what's in your products? Mark was very adamant um, about warning other athletes. Um, is there a formal process um, in place? Is there a process in place to get other athletes to protect themselves? Currently, according to the WADA anti-doping code, the athletes have what is known as strict liability as well okay mm -hmm. so these athletes themselves have to make sure that they are absolutely the ones who are going to ensure nothing wrong or nothing which has a prohibited substance is going to enter their body um, beyond that the laws or rather the anti-doping community hasn't developed a system by which supplements especially um, will be tested on their behalf and you can say this is going to be okay for you to consume. Um, as a matter of fact, it's the opposite. The WADA code says consume nutritional supplements at your own risk. So what Mark is trying to do right now is to go through parliament and the cabinet to come up with legislative policies which will help the country and Kenyan athletes to not even consume or not even come into contact with anything that isn't cleared by a WADA accredited lab. Um, one thing Mark and Steph said is they felt really abandoned by a lot of people. Um, luckily the people who really knew them stood by them but in this industry you're dealing with a lot of people you don't really know, your athletes, your, your teammates, your the, the sporting officials you're one of the few people who were there to meet him at the tarmac, you know. Um, in your personal experience, you can probably take off your legal hat for a moment. What do you think should happen to athletes when, such, when they're faced with such an accusation? How should we react? How should media react? How should coaches react? Mm -hmm. I think with compassion, right? Because what you're dealing with is a human being and unfortunately doping violations do not give you the ability to or the, it doesn't give you room to say i am innocent until you prove me guilty it's the other way around you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent so what we really need to do is understand these athletes are human beings just like anyone else despite the positive outcome of a positive test they need moral support. They will definitely need financial support because it's, an in, it's a very expensive endeavor trying to prove yourself innocent. And what I would say is just don't call them doping cheats. One thing is saying that this person is guilty of an allegation 
that you're likely not sure about what circumstances led to this positive test. The other thing is to abandon them completely. So athletes like Mark are living like outcasts and pretty much like prisoners, even though there's no walls around them, but they have to train on their own. They can't interact with fellow athletes and other people might see them as dopers. So even the laws of anti-doping don't allow you to interact with your fellow athletes, otherwise they will get in trouble. They will be having a violation of association with someone who is under provisional suspension. So it's a very lonely road to go down. And the mental anguish that athletes go through is quite serious. So if you find an athlete who has been found with a positive sample, you need to treat that athlete with great compassion because we've lost quite a number of athletes to um, depression as a result of it.